you know, actually being able to do something that was allowed for them to do, meaning that they were able to be married to someone. And just because that person is married already does not mean that they are off limits to be married. I know people don't want to hear that. And I'm saying that even for myself, I am a uh, subsequent wife. Assalamu alaikum, peace. It's your coach, Coach Nyla, one of the co-founders of Outstanding Personal Relationships as well as co-author of the book, Let's Talk Polygamy Uncensored. <laughs> so in this video, I'm going to discuss some things about insecurities and being insecure that can lead to jealousies and polygamy or polygyny, if you will, and um, give you a little bit of my backstory in a way. Um, yeah, <laughs> so... I'll probably put a little bit of um, a little quick video um, up about my backstory so you guys can get uh, a feel of <laughs> what I mean about being insecure. Because for those who actually follow our channel, they'll understand that I am Coach Nadir's subsequent wife or second wife, if you will. And that in itself had caused a lot of issues between people listening to what I had to say, um, having their biases against me and these different things like that. And it caused a number of insecurities in my marriage. It caused insecurities within myself and it actually caused some insecurities in my business as well. Um, we do OPR, Outstanding Personal Relationships together. So it's me, my co-wife, Coach Fatima, and our husband, Coach Nadir. However, because of my position or my uh, timeline, if you will, in the marriage, um, I've gotten a lot of blowback from people. But there was someone in the comments that made sure that she stated how she felt about me before. And it was fine because I really loved the comment because it showed growth and it showed maturity and it showed someone being accountable for her bias. And so it was beautiful to me, but those are the things that I've gotten over the years, over the last decade, um, that could have totally caused me to feel some type of way about myself and not feel like I'm worthy. And if you are feeling that way, I'm going to tell you that we can totally get out of that feeling, feeling unworthy, whether you're a first wife, a second wife, you know, third wife or fourth wife, that if you're feeling some uncertainty, some insecurities um, that is causing you to feel a little bit jealous or feeling like you may not belong or you're just wondering you know, where you fit in, please stay tuned. Please continue to listen because I have some tips for you. I have some tips for you. Um, these are tips that work for me as well as tips that has worked for a number of my clients. Yes. To actually be a person who's coached and I've coached before. I've coached women on self-esteem, on self-confidence, on being able to communicate um, within their relationships and be able to communicate how they feel and just get their point across way before outstanding personal relationships, actually even before I was married to Coach Nadir, I've been a coach for women and being able to have women embrace their natural beauty. So um, the thing is, is that it all changed for me when I married Coach Nadir and we actually started outstanding personal relationships and became public with being in polygyny. That's an interesting thing, too, because it's not anything about being secret, but I mean, to the public, like on social media and forming outstanding personal relationships, um, doing that type of thing. And of course, this is not the video to really go into a lot of the back history um, or the backstory that um, led us to what we do, what we do now. We have them on our YouTube channel. Definitely take a look at those. However, yes. Um, there was 
things that could have been done better, you know, um, all around the board when it came to being in polygyny um, from our husband's end, as well as from our ends as wives. Um, and I'm going to get into that because that can that can also increase your insecurity when you are not doing things correctly, meaning that you're not having proper communication, meaning that you're so insecure that you are wondering about yourself. So you're not expressing yourself enough or you're not expressing yourself at all. And then you're bottling things up. Let me know in the comments if that has been you say, Hey, I've bottled stuff up before and I exploded one time and it was not a good look. Um, or I bottled things up and I became passive aggressive and it caused some issues in my marriage. So with me, um, as I st had, if you guys seen the thumbnail, it said, I have been insecure in polygyny, but polygyny has not made me insecure. I've been insecure before that. I had a number of different things that made me insecure or that I allowed to make me insecure. But polygyny, it was difficult. It was difficult being a person that was called not the real wife, being called a snake, being called, um, you know, well, I had issues with you before people saying that I've had issues with you before just because you know, your presence and how your presence made Coach Fatima feel. And because I rock so hard with Coach Fatima, it was hard for me to even like you or rock with you. So <laughs> that is just the things that people go through in their lives. But then you have to ask yourself, is that mature? Do we not rock with someone just because they are, you know, that because of their presence, because of how their presence made another person feel not that they were mean, not that they were spiteful, not because they were uh, backbiting or slandering or coming in to disrupt and destroy, but just because their presence, you know, actually being able to do something that was allowed for them to do, meaning that they were able to be married to someone. And just because that person is married already does not mean that they are off limits to be married. I know people don't want to hear that. And I'm saying that even for myself, I am a uh, subsequent wife. And it was really difficult for me to constantly put that out there because I really felt, and I still feel to this day, but I'm not going to let that stop me. But I felt that it put me in a position of being less than because other people saw it as me being less than, or they saw it as me not being worthy to be listened to um, because of the timeline. So I wouldn't stay, say that much. And I did feel, and it was true at the beginning of our OPR journey, that people were really picking sides. People had gotten a little bit better with you know keeping that to themselves. But people would pick sides and it really affected and infected my business and um, and the things that I do because I coach and my co-wife, she coaches as well. And we don't coach together. So because people had this bias of my timeline, instead of listening to me as a coach and hearing what I can bring to the table and letting people know that I can actually help them and assist them in different ways of growing because I've done this well before I became a subsequent wife, well before um, OPR, that that didn't matter. However, I'm like, you know what? That's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to shy away from. I have a lot of women who are becoming subsequent wives or they have been approached to be subsequent wives and they're feeling away because they're feeling like they're going to be looked at as less than. Like they're not good enough for their own husband or to be a first wife or anything like that. A wife is a wife is a wife. Regardless of your timeline, we don't have control over those timelines. Allah does. The most high does. So to get over these insecurities, regardless of what your timeline is, I'm going to tell you one of the things is to embrace your beautiful identity. Embrace that beautiful identity. Well, how do you do that, Coach Nyla? <laughs> well, this is how you do that. You look at the amazing things that make you you. You look at those amazing things that make you you and you celebrate those things. Don't compare yourself to someone else. Comparison is the thief of joy. So comparing yourself to your co-wife 
to your sister, to your friends, to other people out there. It's just taking away from the amazing things that you have to offer. You know, continue to work on yourself, work on yourself more than you work on anything else. And that includes your marriage, because when you're working more on you, your marriage is going to be great. Why? Because you're going to attract that beauty. You're going to attract that greatness. You're going to be able to communicate properly. You're going to be able to attract the beauty. Even if your husband is not on the same page or that he's not working so hard in improving himself, let's just say that, a couple things will happen. He's either going to eventually be inspired by you and he's going to continue to work on himself because he wants to be a great man and be better, be a better man and continue to grow because he sees that you can grow. Not stating that, um, you know, all men just need to <laughs> follow their wives because that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we also need to do things for ourselves so we can be inspiration to others. We should be able to be inspiring, not controlling. So our husbands can be inspired by us. Anybody can be inspired by us and we can be inspired by them. So be careful with that. Um, another thing is being able to communicate properly, being able to do that. You can work on that. There are different programs. We do um, trainings on that. I actually coach on that, how to communicate with your husband properly, how to communicate with anyone properly for that matter. You know, being able to get your point across without seeming like you're being defensive, um, without being um, disruptive, being crass, being just a hot dang on mess. Right. So I do that because I had to learn to do that because I am, I was a person that really got defensive on a number of things because I know I worked so hard at doing the things that I do and do the things that I do well. But when other people don't see that, it feels a way I get it. I understand it. But sometimes we have to understand that people won't get us. They just won't. And that's okay, as long as we are constantly improving in our lives, constantly improving in our relationships. But we have to do that. So work on yourself more than you work on anything else. Celebrate your wins. Look at how great and awesome you are. You know, thank the most high for creating an awesome being such as yourself and continue to work on that. And. I think, you know, those are the main things. There's so many more, but those are the main things. Definitely take time out for self-care. It's important. It's very important. And this is what I mean, taking your meds. That's what you need to do for your self-care. That means meditate, exercise, eat properly. That's that D part is the diet and get proper rest. And I'm saying that as a reminder to myself, as well as a lesson to you all, because when I have those all four of those things in place, I am a much pleasant person to be around and I'm very productive and I love the person that I am as well as the person that I'm becoming. And I know that can work for you. So hope you guys got some great information. You guys want some training on this. You guys want to find out more information about the coaching. Definitely visit me at coachnyla.com. But you want to get some deep dive information and get some classes on what I'm teaching and talking about here, go to our campus at polygamyeducation.com. And I look forward to seeing you there. Make sure you are growing intentionally, loving fearlessly, and connecting on a higher level every single day. We can be insecure in anything in life, but don't let it take you take over your beauty and just what you can offer in your marriage as well as to yourself in your life. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Inshallah, God willing. Assalamu alaikum. Peace.